Welcome to MLB Hot Topic. I'm Amber Wilson for CBS Sportsline, and we welcome in our MLB expert, Scott Miller, to the program from Anaheim. Scott, we're closing in on midsummer. The days of teams waiting and hoping for better things are pretty much gone. What we're seeing now is probably what we're going to get, which doesn't make Chicago White Sox general manager Kenny Williams very happy, does it? <laughs> no, Amber. Kenny Williams, the general manager of the Chicago White Sox, is not a very happy camper, and he's come to realize that this deep into the season, what you see probably is what you get. The White Sox have underachieved this year, and this past weekend, Kenny Williams finally said, I'm not taking this anymore. It's time to look to the future. Now, what does that mean? The biggest trading chip he has is lefty pitcher Mark Burley, and immediately his phone started ringing off the hook. The Boston Red Sox, the New York Mets, the Atlanta Braves all came calling for Mark Burley. Now, there's also a chance the White Sox could re-sign Mark Burley. That's gone hot and cold over the past few months. Burley's a free agent after this season. The key to whether Kenny Williams trades Mark Burley so far, um, he has not agreed to give any potential trade partner a 72-hour window to negotiate a contract extension with Burley in the event a trade is completed. That scared some teams away because they say, hey, we're not going to give you what you want for Mark Burley and then lose him as a free agent this winter. Kenny Williams is not going to do a fire sale like the famous or infamous White Sox fire sale back in 97 when they traded away Roberto Hernandez and Wilson Alvarez. He wants to keep the team competitive. His point is to get major league players in return and retool, not rebuild. He can get something for outfielder Jermaine Dye, who's also a, a free agent this winter. Uh, he may trade pitchers Javier Vasquez or Jose Contreras. Right now, as I say, Burley's the biggest chip. And how that one goes, we're going to find out real quick over the next couple of weeks. Okay, Scott, and changes are also on the way in Los Angeles, too. What's up with the Dodgers infield and Nomar Garcia Parra? Yeah, a lot of changes out in Los Angeles, or at least a couple of significant changes, um, Amber. And the, the Dodgers are not thrilled with the way they're playing. They're in the race right now in that National League West with Arizona and San Diego, and they think they can win the division, but they've kind of been stuck in quicksand so far. And finally, manager Grady Littles made a, a pretty significant in-season decision with Nomar Garcia Parra. He's moving him from first over to third base to make room for hot rookie James Loney at first base. You're going to start to see Loney out there almost every day for the Dodgers, as you should. The guy had 11 RBI in his first nine games. Garcia Parra at first base, meanwhile, had just one home run in 250-plus at-bats. He's hitting well with runners in scoring position in the clutch, but he's just not a power guy anymore. He's not producing as much as the Dodgers would like to see. Also, tied in with that, they have, have not found an answer at third base. Well, Wilson Betamet, uh, Tony Abreu, those guys have fizzled. And so the Dodgers think right now their best bet is to shift Garcia Parra over to third base and play James Loney every day. And Loney's part of that hot prospect crew they have. Andre Ethier, the outfielder. Matt Kemp, an outfielder. These guys all could be big stars one day in Dodger Stadium. And that day is beginning to happen right now. Also, where Grady Little's concerned, another interesting move this week. He juggled his pitching rotation some so that... In the big series with Arizona this week out in the desert, uh, Brad Penny started the first game of that series. Grady wanted Penny to go because he thinks it's important to win games now, and even though it's only June rather than September, this was a pretty big series against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Okay, and a lot of people, Scott, had the impression a few days ago that the Tigers traded Mike Moroth to St. Louis to make room for Kenny Rogers when he returned from the DL. Is that the real story behind that move? Yeah, interesting times in Detroit, Amber. I, when when they uh, when the Tigers traded Mike Maroth to St. Louis last week, everybody just assumed, hey, Kenny Rogers is finally back from the disabled list. They need to make room in the rotation, and so they traded Maroth. But it's not just tied into Kenny Rogers. They really like left-handed rookie Andrew Miller, and the Tigers decided they'd like to take a longer look at him right now. He's still somewhat of an unknown quantity because. Um, Last, he, he, he was their number one pick just last June, so he's still pretty young, and he might be a little too young yet, but the Tigers love his 6'6 six, six frame. His, uh, he has a really good fastball and a good breaking ball, and with, with his 
tall body, when he uncoils the fastball or the breaking ball, hitters find it difficult to read, and the Tigers really, really like his upside, and they think he can help them now rather than later. So they had Kenny Rogers coming back from the disabled list and Nate Robertson back from the disabled list. So they had to make a few moves. They decided, we want to keep Andrew Miller in the rotation. So they shipped Mike Maroth to St. Louis. And now the Tigers find themselves with a – they've been pitching rich anyway, but now they have three lefties in the rotation, which should give some other teams some fits. And they really have it going right now. The Tigers might have the best pitching in the American League. Uh, Dice K. Matsuzaka and Josh Beckett in Boston notwithstanding. Bobby Cox in Atlanta has seen most of the American League Central teams, and he saw Boston. He said, I really like Detroit's pitching. What the Tigers need to do is get their bullpen in shape. Uh, Fernando Rodney went back on the disabled list. Joel Zamaya is on the disabled list. Uh, Tigers have had some trouble late in games. That's right now their biggest issue, but it will be interesting to see how Andrew Miller does as we progress from here on through the rest of the season. All right, thanks as always, Scott, and that'll do it for MLB Hot Topic. Don't forget to come back and check us out again next week. For Scott Miller, I'm Amber Wilson. Have a good one.